I am Bouncy Pony, and you are in for a treat. Welcome to my not-so-new-anymore series, What Even Is This Farm? Where I tour Stardew Valley saves I achieved perfection on and then never touched again. I just finished a farm, so this week we are visiting Darth Beth, who completed perfection on day 17 of year 3. I'll be honest, this was a little bit of a fail on my part, we'll get into that. She is living on Optimal Wild Farm, named because I wanted to keep track of the fact that I was trying to get perfection as fast as possible. Again, fail. And it was on the Wilderness Farm. I did start off with monsters on this save. There aren't any monsters anymore, though. All right, so we've got a little bit of an eclectic bedroom here, okay? Like, the wallpaper is giving me, like, very peaceful, very colorful, but then the modern bed, I think, just clashes with that. I I actually use decoration, so that's something. But also, like, this whole feng shui, I'm not saying that right, of this corner, I don't know, it gives me the ick. I, I like that I fit so much stuff into this room as, like, a bedroom. It, realistically, do you ever have a dresser blocked from opening by a bedside table? No, you don't. You see, it's it's all just logistics. All right, and then we've got our kids' room. We've got one kid in this save. Leia, that's right, because I was going for a Star Wars vibe. I was gonna name my son Luke whenever I have him. And we married Sam in this save. What's on my agenda today? Not really doing anything and rewinding time and not using this day. Just have a basic TV here. Honestly, most of the time I'm way too cheap to get the big TV. Then we have one table, I guess, where I have my breakfast sitting at. And okay, cool. The big, like, scary looking fireplace. The iridium fireplace. That's right. And I, I think for this save, honestly, I was like very torn between going through some dark, like, aesthetics to go with, like, the Sith vibe. And you can see, like, I've got a pretty intense outfit on. But then, like, half the house is just, like, bright. Like, was I going for a hoth? I don't know that I was going for a Hoth look intentionally. And here's the little baby. Leia's still crawling. And Sam's room is still basic. Oh yeah, and then this was like my dark moody bedroom, where as the other bedroom is sort of looking bright. I really like this fireplace for like a dark mood. I sort of liked the industrial pipe. And then of course the decor that you only get from the wilderness farm up here. That I kept. I do like the very dramatic aquarium at the bottom of this bedroom with the sea urchin wearing the friggin' wizard's hat over here. I feel like I've just bought every plant that is in the game from every festival and just placed them around. Alright, pretty basic basement got going on. Looks like I'm trying to sync everything up to get onto one schedule. Yeah, and I've got ancient fruit wine all set up to be put into those casks at the same time. Okay, all right. Exit to the farm looks pretty cute. I like the tea bushes in front of the house. And we got a kitty. Hi, kitty. Yes, I also went with Star Wars names for the cat, Mouse Droid, and Droideka for the horse. I've got a nice tulip garden. Sort of an awkward little area behind here that's not being used for anything, but honestly, looks pretty cute. I always like it when I can line up the stable with the house here so that the roofs match up. And then we've got like some processing up here. It's sort of like the solar panels as like a we harvest the energy of the sun in this house vibe. And then I've got secret key fruit hidden over here behind my keg, marking that spot. We've got our main processing area in our usual square over here with both statues of perfection. All right, and then we've got our animal enclosures, which are actually enclosed for once. And I've got little fencing set up here to propagate grass out. I've only got a couple of all of the trees tapped. I don't have any tapped mahogany trees. I'm sorry, no one needs the sap from tapped mahogany trees, okay? And then I've got both our barn and coop lined up here. Heck yeah, it's salmon berry season. Salmon berries for the win! And then we've also got some fenced in grass down here as well. And then the greenhouse is also down here. I don't hate this because I feel like it provides some sort of nice structure for the animals. 
We've got a full ancient fruit greenhouse, not bad. And trees surrounding the entire perimeter. Well, except for the bottom perimeter, but I mean, who even likes that? I see we've also got some decorative plants down here. I I like that appearance. It makes the greenhouse look even more like homey rather than industrial. But speaking of industrial, we have industrial sized fields on this farm. So starting from here, we have, what are these, rhubarb I think? Basically every square inch of usable farmland on this farm is farm. There is not a whole lot of space devoted to anything else except for crops. We've even got some of these pressure nozzles on the sprinklers so that they shoot further out and we have to use fewer sprinklers. We've put the golden clock up by Grandpa's shrine. I, I sort of like this. It's sort of like a time immemorial type of vibe. Like our farm will live on forever, Grandpa will live on forever. I don't know. The uh, asymmetrical tombstones, though, are bugging me a little bit. Uh, I don't know why I set them up like that. And then we've got some of these little logs, which I think look homey. Can't sit on them, though. I, I wish you could sit on these, because they look like they'd be perfect sitting height. We've got two obelisks here up against the cliff, where they're conveniently out of the way. We've got lightning rods lining the cliffs again. I do like that. I like the symmetrical pathing around by the warp totem. We've got the desert warp totem easily accessible here. And we've got the most important ginger island even more easily available. And it's raining on the island. Well, that's fine. All right, let's see. We've got good pathing around our field here. And have we gotten it to completely 100% pineapple like I like too? Yes, we have. Good job, us. And then we've got just a little bit of taro growing on the edge. Ugh, I'm gonna dig myself points here for the pathing. I know this is where the sprinklers line up, but like, ugh, this is just bad. This is not a complete path. Did we decorate the inside of this house at all? No, <laughs> not even a little bit. Just left all the default area, put our bed close to the front of the house, and put all of our schedule things close together. And that is it for Optimal Wild Farm. The fact that within two years, I completely covered the entire farm, as well as got rid of the monsters on my farm. Like, how did I even cultivate all of these fields with a bunch of monsters on the farm? I don't know, I must have gotten all that done in year two. So as I mentioned earlier, the reason why this farm went so far into year three, and yes, 17 days into spring is not a whole lot into year three. I could have gotten perfection on spring one of year three, except for the friggin' morel. I did not use a chair skip to get into the secret woods in spring of year one, and then spring of year two, I just forgot about it. And the morel is needed for like two cooking recipes and one crafting recipe and you have to ship it. I failed myself and that's the worst kind of failure you can have. Now, what rating would I give this farm? Honestly, this is more decoration than I do on average by far. I'm really quite proud of this. I think I would give myself an A minus. I think it's an A except for the slight aesthetic clashing choices and the morel mistake. That will perhaps always be my downfall. I have been Bouncing Pony. Until next Saturday, all the best.